Hello, my name is Kristen Maitland, and I'm an Associate Professor of Biomedical Engineering at Texas A&M University. I'm really happy to be a part of this symposium and tell you about our work on multimodal optical imaging uh, for early detection of oral cancer. First, I want to acknowledge the team of researchers that have done this work, in particular, um, Javier Ho, who's now at the University of Oklahoma, Lisa Chang, and John Wright, who are both oral pathologists at the Texas A&M College of Dentistry, and of course, all the students and postdocs that have contributed to this work and our funding from the National Cancer Institute. Oral cancer is one of a number of, of cancers in the head and neck. And it does have quite a high incidence worldwide, um, but in the United States, about 50,000 people are diagnosed each year in the United States, um, leading to about just under 10,000 deaths per year. And this is a relatively high mortality rate, in, especially in comparison with other cancers. And this is mainly attributed to the late level, the late detection um, with regards to the development of oral cancer. There are a number of risk factors that are uh, that contribute to oral cancer. Um, no, most notably, of course, tobacco, both um, smoke tobacco and smokeless tobacco, and more recently, um, HPV has become a, a major contributor to oral cancer, where the fastest growing segment of the oral cancer population are um, non-smokers younger than 50 due to infection with HPV. Our goal is to improve early detection and diagnosis of oral cancer, where the standard practice for diagnosis is biopsy, which is removal of tissue, guided by visual inspection, and then followed by histopathology. Precancerous lesions can be diffuse, multifocal, and heterogeneous, making it difficult to identify the site of most severe disease that should be biopsied. A few optical technologies are currently used clinically for oral cancer de detection with the goal of improving the diagnostic yield. However, with limited specificity with some of these devices, there are a number of technologies that are in development to help in this goal. Building off the clinical procedure of macroscopic visual inspection, followed by microscopic, microscopic evaluation of cellular and tissue features, our multi multimodal optical imaging approach uses macroscopic fluorescence lifetime imaging, or FLIM, to detect specific changes in the endogenous fluorescence resulting from malignant transformation, followed by high resolution reflectance confocal microscopy to detect the changes in cellular morphology and tissue architecture. The multispectral time domain fluorescence lifetime imaging system captures three wavelengths of fluorescence decay so that we can generate images both of intensity for those three wavelengths bands as well as lifetime maps. And these three wavelengths are uh, focused on fluorescence from collagen, NADH, and FAD. The time domain FLIM system uses a 355 nanometer pulse laser scanned through a handheld endoscope to excite the fluorescence in the tissue. The fluorescence emission is collected and filtered into the three wavelength bands and coupled into three fibers of increasing length. This encodes a time delay between the three wavelengths so that each excitation pulse results in three decays that can be detected on a single PMT. The endoscope collects images around uh, one centimeter in diameter with a hundred micron resolution in less than a second. The acquired data includes both intensity and lifetime data that is currently under evaluation for classification of disease. And this work is really led by Dr. Javier Ho. These images are showing an example of a squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue and the normal contralateral side of the same patient. And it's showing uh, um, a number of features and many of them uh, we can see differences showing the potential for this technology. As I had mentioned, the 
FLIM system was designed to have a macroscopic view looking at the entire lesion for um, areas that would indicate uh, potential for disease. Our goal to increase the specificity of optical imaging for detection of the oral precancer is to use the um, high resolution reflectance confocal microscopy to look at cellular features in the tissue um, with high resolution to identify some of the um, changes that might be indicative of malignancy or pre-malignancy. Some of the advances that we have tried to implement to address the challenges um, in uh, confocal microscopy in vivo include doing axial scanning um, in tissue in vivo. Uh, where we would normally have um, a sample scan through the focal plane of a confocal microscope to generate images as a function of depth, with uh, clinical application, we need to integrate this into a handheld scope that um, is fixed in position while scanning is accomplished. To do this, we use an electrically tunable focused lens that um, allows us to play the micro uh, place the microscope objective in contact with the tissue, and then we can scan the focal plane through the epithelium by changing the de or the deformation of the uh, electrically tunable lens. Additionally, we've made the system more robust by integrating um, a dual clad fiber coupler to uh, make it less sensitive to misalignment. And overall, we have um, a field of view that is less than one millimeter in diameter with a lateral resolution of about 1.5 and an axial resolution of six to 12 microns depending on the depth of that focal plane. Um, and we're able to capture images through the epithelium of the oral tissue. One of the challenges with translating optical imaging technologies to the clinic is both inter and intra patient variability. The tissue inside of your mouth is very different just even within a single patient and the structure shows up in the imaging. So we need to take this into account in our data acquisition by acquiring data from a lot of people, a lot of patients. And when we start looking at trying to differentiate disease from normal tissue, one uh, approach in the early phase when you don't have many patients is to take data from a patient's um, lesion and then also from the contralateral normal so that you can compare from within a patient to see if there are differences. Another challenge is dealing with multimodality systems and trying to integrate um, two different technologies into one device. Uh, so here we've been um, integrating FLIM, which is, uses UV illumination. Um, and in our approach, it's using a large field of view for the macroscopic scale, and then integrating it with um, high resolution confocal microscopy, which we're using near infrared, which is a very different um, wavelength of light. And here we're doing it very, for a very small field of view. And in addition to trying to integrate these two, if you keep them as two separate systems, you need to be able to register the two images relative to each other. And then um, just beyond that, unrelated to multimodality systems, you also need, need to be able to image, uh, register the histology location to your imaging location, um, especially for technology validation. And then finally, just to talk a little bit about the challenges and maybe opportunities for um, translating academic research to commercial systems. Um, clinical collaborators that have an innovative mindset are extremely valuable. Uh, not only can they give you guidance on how your device should work or look or feel, um, but also they can um, evaluate your different prototypes at different stages rather than looking at that first prototype and thinking, what is this? How am I supposed to use this? So um, we've been very fortunate. Also, with regard to using graduate students for data acquisition, you need to make sure that um, it's in line with their um, academic goals. 
And um, this is particularly difficult if you have a low number of patients or a low frequency. So if it takes too long, then it could be really challenging. Um, but that experience in the clinic or in the operating room is really valuable. And then also uh, different institutions have uh, a different um, process for or um, evaluation for the value of um, commercializing technology or moving it towards commercialization and so that academic infrastructure and the support uh, promoting the impact that your technologies can have is really important as well. So I want to wrap up by thanking the organizers for the invitation and I look forward to seeing you online. Thank you.